Good morning. morning. Welcome home to St. Paul's Cathedral. Yeah. (laughs) My name is Penny Bridges. I serve as the Dean or Senior Pastor of St. Paul's, and it's my joy to welcome you, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself in the journey of faith please know that you are most welcome to participate in all that we do here at St. Paul's. And it's it's just such a joyful day to see this mix of old friends and and new friends, newcomers, new guests um, coming together today in spite of the rain. Thank you. If you are a first time uh, guest, visitor, I hope that you'll you'll introduce yourself to me, to Jeff, um, to our ushers, um, I, we may have a gift for you. I'm not sure if the gifts are, are, are out. Or Pat is saying yes, there are gifts for new, new, new folks um, to remind you to come, come back and see us again soon. Um, the bulletins are accessible on your phone through the QR codes at the back. Um, so you might, if you haven't already done that, you want to point your camera, your phone camera, at the stanchion QR code, and that will give you access to the bulletin. Um, It also gives you access to the weekly email information, all the announcements. Uh, When it comes time for communion, the ushers will guide you forward. We will be standing um, and distributing only the host uh, for the time being. The bishop has asked us uh, to be cautious about the wine. Uh, If you require a gluten-free wafer, that will be over here at the end. Um, You'll see a small table with gluten-free wafers for those who need them. If you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week, I invite you to stand if you would like people to know about it. I see the knights, yes, the Poplins. And Anya, let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, you may have noticed there is a, uh, there's a, a roped-off area here. We have been asked to leave a 12-foot radius from the pulpit um, for safety's sake, um, and the bishop has asked us to continue to wear masks unless we're up front 12 feet away from somebody. Uh, from anybody and uh, leading the worship. Five o'clock service this afternoon will be our, uh, a rebroadcast of Easter Lessons and Carols. It's usually Choral Evensong, but today it's a very special service from, I think, two years ago. Um, I hope that you'll tune in. It's all online still. Five o'clock and 8 a.m. are still online services. The Spanish service is online today, but as of next week, we'll be back in person in here. That's at 1 p.m. if you want to come. Um, The Regathering Task Force uh, continues to evaluate um, and look at the guidelines, and we'll be meeting again this Thursday to see what what additional steps we can take as we move back into full ministry and operation. But I refer you to my letter that I sent out last Wednesday for the current uh, guidelines and information. Thank you for your patience. And now, please stand as you're able as we worship.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. 
For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you have given me is from you. From the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to God. In the name of the Holy Trinity, one God. It's just so good to have this view. <laughs> one of the miracles.
miracles of modern science is the ability to correct problems with our vision. I am very nearsighted, and as I've grown older, my lens prescription has become more complicated. These days, I wear a different contact lens in pre prescription in each eye. Lens one for close-up work, lens two for distance. As long as I keep both eyes open, I can function reasonably well, both near and far. I'm in awe of the resilience of the brains that God has given us. Whenever we read the Gospels, we are reading them, as it were, through two different lenses. With lens one, we are in the story with Jesus and the disciples, imagining ourselves today in that upper room on Maundy Thursday. And through lens two, we know ourselves to be on the other side of the resurrection 2,000 years later, living in the community of the church that celebrates Easter every Sunday, that tries to live by Jesus' teaching, and that awaits his coming again. Today, we have a lens three to complicate matters even further. We are at an in-between moment in the church year between the Ascension last Thursday and Pentecost next Sunday. These multiple lenses can make for a confusing jumble of emotions. With lens one, I'm tense with anticipation of the suffering that Jesus is about to undergo. With lens two, I'm joyful because he has risen and we are Easter people celebrating our redemption. With lens three, I'm trying to make sense of what happened with the ascension and getting ready for a new season in our life. And <laughs> if I'm paying attention to the reading from Acts, I'm also back there with the disciples in the upper room after the ascension, after Jesus has left them again not knowing that the Holy Spirit is about to descend upon them. This mixed bag of feelings reflects real life. Perhaps it's where many of us are a lot of the time, and especially at this time. We see the end of the pandemic approaching, and we rejoice to have made it through and to be able to worship in person and see our friends again. We grieve the loss of millions of people to this virus, perhaps including some dear to us, and all of the hardship the pandemic has caused. We are exhausted by the vigilance and the constantly changing conditions and guidelines. We are strangely anxious about going out in public and being in crowds again after staying home for a year and wondering to mask or not to mask. And we're worried about how the world might have changed and how it much more it might change in the post-pandemic era. Who or what will help us make sense of all this confusion? Well, we start with the Gospel. This section of John's Gospel is known as the Farewell Discourse. It's a long set of teachings that Jesus shares with the disciples on the night before he dies. They don't know that he's about to be arrested and killed, but he does. So these chapters contain all the important things he wants them to know before he is taken from them. If you've ever lost a loved one, perhaps you were blessed by the opportunity to have a last conversation, a farewell discourse, a chance to say all those important things to each other. When my parents died, when the man I was married to for 28 years died, I did not have that opportunity. But when my beloved in-laws came to the end of their lives, I was privileged to be able to tell them what they meant to me. It somehow made the grieving less painful. So here is Jesus taking this last chance to tell the disciples, and through them, us, all that they mean to him. He begins by humbly washing their feet. He breaks bread with them. He tells them about the Holy Spirit that will come after he is gone. He tells them that he's going away. And then he prays this long prayer, which is known as the high priestly prayer, because in it, Jesus takes the role of the high priest in the temple, 
speaking to God on behalf of his people. I have always struggled with this section of the gospel. The language is convoluted and hard to follow. But for those of us searching for meaning, for something we can hold on to in the confusion and struggle of our world, there is something here for us. Jesus says to the Father, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. The life and work of Jesus teaches us about the true name of God, the great I Am, who created the heavens and the earth. And that true name is love. The love that gives of itself, that gets down on its knees to wash feet, that shares the table and breaks the bread with every sad and broken human being. Jesus prays that all who live by his words will be protected in a world where it often feels like there is no safe place. The Holy Spirit is God's continuing presence among us, leading us forward and emboldening us to courageously proclaim the good news of the gospel, setting aside fear as we grow into the full stature of Christ. Jesus speaks of the joy he has experienced in being a part of this community, among friends, among people who dare to speak their truth in love, even when the rest of the world resists truth and love. And he asks God to continue to guide this community in the way of truth, which is the way of eternal life. The last verses of the prayer are not included in our reading today. But in them, Jesus extends his prayer from those in the room with him to those who will believe in him through the word that the disciples will speak. He asks that all who follow him may know the unity with one another that he knows with the Father. A request that we echo in our baptismal service when we begin by proclaiming one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. And Jesus ends with words of love about his friends. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. He ends where he began, with love. And then he walks out to meet his death. The story from Acts picks up later, after the crucifixion and resurrection, after the 40 days when the risen Christ returned to his friends, after the ascension. Once again, Jesus has left them, and once again the disciples are grieving and fearful. But as human beings have always done, after every loss and every disaster, they prepare to pick up the pieces and carry on. They work through the confusion of the moment to restore their community, to mend what has been shattered, to prepare for whatever may come next. And because they remain faithful, because they stay together in spite of the loss and the betrayal and the confusion and the fear, what comes next is what we will celebrate next week the bewildering, invigorating, inspiring fire of the Holy Spirit that will drive them out to proclaim the message of Jesus to the ends of the earth, igniting a flame of courageous love that will spread and grow, reaching all the way across the centuries and the globe, even to us here today, as we, in our turn, prepare to pick up the pieces and carry on, trusting that where Jesus has gone, there too will we, in the end, be welcomed. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Saviour Christ has gone before who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen in us. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God, true God, God from God made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and had conscious death. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. Seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory of the church, living in the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Lord. We believe in the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son worship the Lord of God. He is the Lord of the Father. We believe in one Lord. Let us pray for the church and for the world. I ask your prayer for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Susan, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, for the healing of the earth in this critical time of climate change, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for the welfare of the world. I ask your prayers for the poor, the hungry, the oppressed, the unsheltered, those in prison, and for the sick. For Molly Kittle, Elaine, Carolyn, and Joe, Robin Pratt and family, Jane and family, Patty Williams, the Zhao family, David Williams, Fred Holman, Justin de Groot, Debbie Tyndall, Erlene Legotki, Gabriel Hicks, Tony, John Koenig, Charles and Jacqueline Brooks, Sean Coughlin, Brad Lovelace, Anderson, for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, for the unaccompanied migrant girls and boys sheltered at the Convention Center, and for those we now name. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Bobby Potter, Judy Gonzalez, David Zhao, Peg Marston, and for those we now name. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for the birth of Callum Reese O'Reilly. Pray for grateful hearts. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
The peace of the Lord be always with you. One more announcement this morning, and that is as you come forward for communion uh, this morning, we will have, we have a very special way of uh, dispensing communion in this uh, in this time. Good morning. Good morning, church. All of the church. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in this time of pandemic, we have a very special way of uh, distributing communion. So when you come forward, we'll invite you to leave your mask on and hold your hands out. Uh, we, will ha we have a touchless way of giving you communion. We call them Pez dispensers. That's not what they are, uh, but you will see how that works. Uh, so we'll invite you to hold on to the bread after you've received it in your hands until you return to your seat then commune in your seat. So it, it'll work out, I promise. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, after his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be, and reign with him in glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and, the blood of his, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where, the bless, where with the blessed Virgin Mary blessed Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us Thine is the kingdom, 
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. This is the table, not of the church, but of Jesus Christ. It is made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little. You who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time or ever before. You who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. Come, not because the church invites you. It is Christ, and he invites you to meet him here. The gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you all. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you all. the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of Jesus. May the risen Christ, who has passed into the heavens, clothe you with power from on high. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.